So we're going to create a really stunning poster of the type that looks like this, 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 and this. And we're going to use Canva, which is a dedicated software for doing this. So let's work and relax as we get started with this video. So we're going to follow the story of Steven, who is a, an undergraduate student who has just returned from a conference in which he saw someone who used this fantastic software called Canva to design some really stunning uh, poster. And so he's going to present his work in the final year undergraduate project uh, presentation. And so he wanted to try out the same Canva that his friend in the conference used. These are the specifications that he's going to use. So the first thing here is that the poster size has to be an A1 poster. And that means the width of it is 60 cm and the height of it is 84 cm. The other requirement is that your poster design has to be in portrait mode as against being in landscape mode. And then the organizers have also said that you must restrict yourself to about 28 point area of font size. So the first thing we need to do is to go to this website called canva.com so www.canva.com and when you get to the canva.com if you are a student you can go straight to the education section here and either as a student subscribe sign up for a free account you know all you need is your university email account or your you know your teaching email account if you're a member of staff you could use the other bits and that will also help you in doing that i already have my own personal account which is a premium account and i'm going to use that the advantage of having a premium account or an enhanced account is that you have more access to templates that normally are not available in the free account. But I'm going to use my premium account in this video. So the first thing you need to do in creating yours is to just go to create design right at the top end here. And we're going to create a poster. So we'll type in poster right here and look at the options. So there's so many options of poster that you want for us. And one we're looking for is poster as a portrait. So I'm creating a portrait poster but it has to be an A1 poster. So and I'll right away go to resize and under resize, I can actually specify the dimensions of the poster that I want. In this case, it's an A1 poster of a size 60 and a height 84. And we can then click copy and resize. So what it will do is I resize the poster into the format that we want, which is this. Now it's currently a blank document and that's fine. And if you're going to work with a blank document, what I'll normally do first is to go to photos and under photos here you can shop you know stop only look for background and within this background you can begin to build and you can use any of this as your background so let's assume that i select that so this is a typical background you can start off with for your post line it's already looking a bit fanciful and then you can go ahead and create a text so if i add a text so i could put the heading right away so whatever the heading is and once you create the heading like that, then you can begin to build it up by assemble all the entities that fit into this poster. For example, you could go onto the elements and on the elements here, you could also start with one of these to start creating the blocks that define how your poster is going to look. So the freedom really is for you to determine how you're going to create this poster. But however, the essence of going to a software like Canva is because it has loads of templates that you can work with. And so it, it doesn't make any sense to begin to build it from scratch. It makes sense to leverage on the existing post uh, templates that are existing here. So I'm going to delete that page. So what I'm going to now do is to use the existing templates that are within it. And what I will do is I will go on to a design. So in the design tab here are lots of templates that you can use. And so what I'm going to search out for is, let's look at an aesthetic poster. So under the aesthetic poster, you can really find some really fanciful stunning poster that you can use. And so that's what we have here. So there's a lot of them that you can use here. It depends on what kind of poster you want to do. So whether it's an academic poster or maybe some just advertisement or whatever, conference posters. So some of these are really excellent posters. But because I'm building an academic poster, I'm probably going to use stay with this one. So if you click on that, it will then take it into your workspace and then you can begin to build your poster from here. So I'm going to delete this thank you so that I really like the background that it's giving me because I want to keep that background and use it for my poster. So in the end, I'm going to draw a line. So these are the entities. So if we leave them, we can easily move them around and you don't want them moving around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock them in place by selecting all of them. And then at the top end here, say lock. So once you lock them in place, then you can move them around and then you have them, that as a workspace that you can use in creating your poster. Okay, so already the contents of my poster has been 
prepared in a Microsoft Word document like this. So this is the content that Stephen wants to create. So the title, the author, this provides some background. This is something that is advisable for you to do to already have the content that you want to fit into your poster prepared ahead of actually designing the poster. And so this, these are the content that we're going to be using it. And already you could also notice that you have the headings associated with it. So the first thing we want to do is to take the title. So I'll copy the title and get into this. So I'm going to add, let's say maybe a heading title right at the top here. So I'm going to move it to probably somewhere around here where I want. And then control V to paste that heading. Now, as part of the specification, we have to make this thing aerial. So the font size is aerial. So we'll select aerial and we recommend to work with 28. Okay, so clearly 28 is a bit very narrow here. So if we put in 70 there, so that represents a good type. So once you get to this, so what we're going to do is to add some effect to this text. So we'll go to effects here. There is this background option and I want that background to be like a color like that. Clearly the text, we can make a bit that text to pop out more. And so we have something like this. So it look, it looking already quite good in terms of as a text. So the other thing we need to then do is include the logo of this organization. So normally you have your logo elsewhere and you want to bring it into this platform. So under uploads, you, so you just need to upload the file or you could just record an information for yourself. So essentially this is what they, or you could get from any of this platform. If you've got a Dropbox account, you can also get that. So I've already uploaded my files that I'm going to be using for this in this environment. So, and there's a logo here, which is the logo of the investor that, that Steven is going to work with. So we're bringing in this logo here into this environment and we are going to now adjust it so that it will fit in <clears throat> and we can then move it to the top. So let's just reduce that. So move it to the top and we have a logo right there. Now, the other thing is we need to put the name of the person presenting this work. So on that text again, so we can maybe as a subheading, I could call it, you know, Stephen presenter and maybe the university identification number for this student is something like that. So we can reduce all that and then you can move it back into position there. So at least we have the student's name there. Now, so while selecting that, I'll say Ctrl C, Ctrl V. So that creates a copy. I'll take it to the top here. And then maybe I can go back and change it to Arial and select that, you know, take away the bold. And then basically say maybe Steven Supervisor is, so that could be the Steven Supervisor. So we'll just make him a little bit small so that it will be right at top. Now the next bit is if you look at the text file that Steven is using. So we've put the all tab. So we need to think about the project background and motivation. So again, it could be a subheading. So we'll paste it in that environment. And it's also a good thing to do a serialization of the headings. So we can put that here. Now, the next thing is we need to get this information, which is what we're going to the introduction. So we go back to text and just use a little text, this particular option, and then we can paste that information there. Control V to paste. So we have it looking just about all right. So we can align it up in that environment. Now it's not aligning properly because the text is not justified properly. So at the top here, you can click this first. So that's, and then click, so that it gets into a justified arrangement. So you've got a justified arrangement for that information. So what we can do is to select the two of them. Okay. And then control C, control V to copy and just drag it to the next side. So that becomes the next bit and then we'll call this 2.0 and we know that 2.0 is the aims and objective. So we can go there and put aims and objective next to it. Okay. So now the aims and objective, we want everything lined up to the, on the left and all we need to do, so we'll line up to the left. So we need to change this text. So Stephen had already created um, a text for the M and objective. So we'll just paste it in there and it will inherit that same information. So we already have the top end of the poster looking correct. So we've got this and that. Now the next thing we have there is project design and methodology. So we could again, maybe just use the heading. So we could have this as project design and methodology. Okay. So that's the next thing and we need so what we have here is the sys information. So just copy what Steven has here, control C, control, and then take borrow what we have here. Okay. 
all right so we have the project design looking correct now we then bring in the text so there's this graphical flowchart that describes what we want so all we need to do is go back to your upload and we'll look for that information so it's already here so we can bring it in here and when you're bringing make sure you're careful to just allow it to flow because if you put it like this it's going to take the place of the existing graphic there so it should just float around so now and then we we'll have it looking correct and the other thing about is the implementation so we can copy these two together again and then Control C to copy, Control V to paste. So we take it to this other side, and then this becomes our 4.0. So that is project implementation. So we've got project implementation, and there's a little bit of text there that goes with project implementation. So we'll paste it in that environment, and then you know we're happy with how it's shaping and coming together. So and then we're making sure that we're keeping the same width to the text at the top and the bottom. So that's number four. Now there is a little information, there's a, a picture here, so which has already been uploaded. So again, we'll drag it into this window and make sure that we can reduce it so that again, it fits nicely within that space. So that's the first graphical plot for project implementation. Now the next thing is that there is a structural parameter as a second implementation, which we need to take. So again, we'll just copy, Control C, Control V to drag it down here. And we we'll copy the text that we need to put there and then paste it inside that window. Okay, so we are happy with, again, that looks all right. So just below it, we'll then put in this image, which has already been uploaded here. So we'll just drag it over. So we'll make sure that it's looking correct. And then we can now put it in that space. So this is really part of the project implementation phases that we need. And okay, there is this text here. Maybe we can minimize this text and try and utilize all the space. So if we minimize this text here, then we can move and then everything is properly oriented, pro oriented the way it should be. So if we then zoom out, you can see that it's already beginning to look quite nice. So you've got from the heading, as you move down, everything is beginning to look nice. So the last bit is where you'd look at your results. So within here, there is a first result, which is here. So what we're going to do with some information is probably like what we've done. So you copy the two together and then Control C, Control V, and drag that into that position. So that what we can then have now is with five key results. So what's our key results? So we copy that information and paste here. So I would just only use this. I'll just take this information and put there. So one of the key results will be what goes in here. Okay, so if we bring that back in here and then we can minimize it. So that's one of the key results. So you can see there's something going on here. So maybe I'm not happy with this text trying to take over the space here. So I could move it to this other side and then maybe just change. Again, this is the beauty of working in a, an environment like this. You could just move things around and we could take that out. And then only what we have here is this. Okay, so I could call this number six because I know that I will also have number five around here. Again, it's all left for you to just move things around. The basis is that you have a template that you're working with. You're just simply putting the information on top as you see fit. So that's one result which talks about that. The other result that you could think about, maybe this second one, so if we copy, so if we put that second result here, which again, we already have here. So if you bring it into this environment, Okay, maybe, maybe this is a bit better because there's uniformity in the way the data is shown. So, okay, those, those are two good results that we can focus on. So at times when you're trying to create a poster and you're doing it working collaboratively with others. So if you're making changes, other people could also, you know, be aware of the changes you're making and it will tell you. So like in this case, it's identifying that I am the one making this change. If there's another person making a change collaboratively on this, then this is also another good thing that you can have. So already we have the results. And then maybe the last bit we need to do is to then think of the conclusion. So which is our number seven. Okay. So with our number seven, so the second key result is model ranking. So I could just put this here. Okay. So we've got two set of data, one graphical, the other one is a contour plot. And we are happy with all of that. 
okay looks okay so with our conclusion all i need to do is to again borrow the information that we have been using copy and paste so we can then put it right here to represent our conclusion section and we just simply go ahead and copy the conclusion we have on the poster again it makes sense if you had already done this formatting before for you and and we have yeah so it looks good so clearly i don't want you to keep infiltrating into this region so you know by all means you can move things around and then you have a nice way of showing your data so we've got the conclusion also in that environment so we can then have a look at the whole poster so it looks quite nice you've got a nice background and you've got all your data in place and everything looks looks fine so everything looks beautiful now so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to select all the things that i've added and then i'm going to group them so they become one entity so that if you can select them and control x you delete them control z so it looks beautiful so all i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate it so i duplicate this page and now I'm going to change the background. I'm going to change the background. So, okay, if I just select the information I have here and control X, so I've copied it. So I can then look at some other interesting backgrounds that we want. So we can go back aesthetic posters. Okay, so we're going to just copy the data that we have here. So if I just hover and copy, control, so right click and click copy. So that will copy the information that we have there okay so now if we go to another page i don't want this i want let's say why not let's use this one so we can easily remove the text involved so we've got a different background i just need to paste our information and voila we have another again a beautiful poster with a nice background i could go to another one and say okay why not let me use this information okay and then paste my data there so it looks good. However, there is a trick that we can follow because you notice that the background here is interfacing with the image, with the text, and it can be a bit difficult to read. So what I, I would normally do is that if you go to the elements and then you can take one of these and use it as a background. So you cover the text. So after covering the text, you want to set some transparency to it. So the first thing I'll do is I will change this text to maybe something a bit lighter. You can even go and change it to a bit white but then set the transparency to very low. So that transparency becomes a way for you to control what's happening in the background. So in this case, maybe the background, you want it to be a little bit light, lightweight in intensity. And then on top of that, so you could then with this, select the two together and then lock that background. So they are now part of the same thing that you can paste your date on top. So with that information, you now have a background that is a bit light in the background and your text is still looking good. So we can go ahead and try some other options still under design. Um, so that's another good one that I like. So we can then take this information out and then right on top, you paste your data. And then again, you get a fantastic looking poster. So the option of what you can do is quite diverse in terms of how beautiful your poster can be. You can even decide, okay, I don't want any of this. I want maybe some really exciting. So let's say something like that. So again, I can take out the text. And like I said before, what you don't want is you don't want this background interfacing with your text. If you just go ahead and paste your text, it's not really looking good. So what we need to do is to take the element and then cover up what you have. There's a little bit of pink, pinkish feel. So maybe you put it a little bit in the pinkish region and then reduce the intensity sort of, you know, okay, maybe pink is a little bit so you could think of this so it really depends on what you want to do so if we go back to maybe something like this then we could reduce the intensity and then we can paste our text on top and then you've got a nice poster stunning poster with a bit of a background and your main standing out and all that is required once you've done that you have so you could actually present it so if we go and do present so you could actually have a lovely looking um poster that you can present so we can then cycle through to the previous ones that we've done and they are all really looking quite good you know in that clearly what you want to do with all of that is you want to be able to print it so you have to find a way to share it so there are many ways you can share your design after you finished so the, the easiest way is to download a copy of that your particular design 
So you could either download this as a PNG, but I will normally go for a PDF because you want to send it to a printer to, to print. So you can do a PDF of all the posters, but clearly the only one we want is this, this current one that we, we are really interested in. So we can then, I wanted the current page only, which is currently page six, and then click done download so what it will do then is to, to download this and make it available for you to actually be able to use um to 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 then send to a printer okay so i can then call it my stunning poster so i'm going to save it so that's fine and then you can then easily open it as a pdf document and it will have a very high resolution this is the beautiful thing so you can see even when you zoom it up to 400 percent the resolution of what the poster is doing is really really looking good this and and, and everything looks good and you can then easily send this out for printing and take it or even just distribute it and it's a beautiful excellent poster with a nice background and all that so this is how you can create a stunning poster using canva if you want to do it in a simple old way of using Microsoft PowerPoint to do this, then this is a video that is worth looking at. Thank you for interest in this channel and do please subscribe if this is the kind of content that you like and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.